Alright guys, I'm going to start right now. Um, I'll have you guys pass that around and sign it, please. <clears throat> going to do a safety meeting today, just because um, we need to be doing these on a regular basis and we really haven't been, so I'm going to go over a couple of different things and then obviously it's being recorded, so for all of those who are late, overslept, or had other issues, they can look at this uh, on their own time. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first part, housekeeping. So when you are, whenever you have slippery areas, I mean, it's common sense, but I want to make sure everybody realizes, you know, put cones up, um, a barricade, uh, caution tape, something like that, you know, that basically lets people know um, that there's a slippery area, especially if you, let's say, for an example, in the plumbing side, you have some type of leak, you know. Let the customers know, let everybody know, um, you know, that there's water there and, <clears throat> whatever you have to do to barricade that area. Um, make sure we don't store or leave items on stairways. You know, it's pretty much common sense, but believe me, believe me that people do this on a regular basis, so in the construction industry. Um, your own tools or anybody else's tools you're borrowing, make sure that they're stored, put away when they're done, when you're done using them. Do not block or obstruct uh, any kind of stairwells, exits, access to safety and emergency equipment, such as fire extinguishers, things like that, fire alarms, um, especially when you work in commercial buildings. Do not place materials such as boxes or trash in walkways or passageways. Some of this stuff sounds like common sense, but uh, again, this is these things. These are things that actually have caused accidents in the past. So we're just I'm kind of throwing them out again. This is kind of uh, a little bit crazy, but do not use gasoline for cleaning purposes. <laughs> okay, I mean, we, we laugh about it, but obviously this is on here because people have used it. That's and, old school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it does work, but it's stupid. Yeah, it does work, but it is stupid. <laughs> I'm going to go out for a cigarette. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Mop up water around drinking fountains, drinking dispensing machines, ice machines, wherever there's water that um, can be mopped up that's going to be a, you know, that is a safety hazard. So those are just basic housekeeping things, just keeping things your area organized, keeping yourself clean, barricading things if need be, but don't block off stairways or anywhere where there's an exit or you know, walkway that could affect somebody. I've seen plumbers do things in front of doors. Uh, you know, a customer walks out and trips over their bag or, or an extension cord or whatever. Just you know, make sure that when you walk away, everything is safe. If you need to move something, move it. Um, and I'm gonna get there in a minute on how we lift because that's kind of the next topic. So lifting procedures um, is the next thing, and this is something that can cause serious, serious back pain. For those of you who haven't had back pain and you're younger right now, eventually you will, especially yeah. if you lift things incorrectly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things. The first thing is, you know, test the weight of a load before you lift it by pushing, pushing the load on its resting surface. So instead of before you start lifting it, make sure, see how it kind of moves. Uh, if it's easy, if it's heavy, you know, uh, that's that's the first part of it. And then, of course, that should determine if you need to use some kind of dolly or get it, get help from another, uh, you know, person, um, hand trucks, whatever, pallet jacks. If we were to, you know, in that industry, we're not. But you never lift anything with your hands if they're greasy or wet either. Um, and that's pretty much common sense. But believe me, we use a lot of materials. You guys all know that we use a lot of materials here that are, you know, flux. I mean, there's just so many things we use on a regular basis in chemicals that we need to be able to make sure our hands are clean before you start lifting. If you have gloves, use gloves, a good pair of gloves. That usually helps. Um, so in, in particular, when you have sharp corners or, or jagged edges on something that you lifted, make sure you're wearing gloves. So um, when lifting, there's a couple of things that I'm going to kind of demonstrate because um, I've had to do this before, but first of all, you want to face whatever your face the load that you're going to be lifting and then they always say that you know your feet are about six to twelve inches apart and one foot is usually slightly in front of the other okay now why do you think this is why is it important to have one in front of the other leverage and balance leverage and balance right no. because when you're lifting then you bend at the knees keep your back straight right so if you have your feet like this and do it it's a little harder to get down a lot of times so when you're like this it's a lot easier because okay, you have more balance and you're more stable. So about six to 12 inches apart, one leg slightly in front of the other. It depends if you're left or right-handed, I guess, or how you like to lift. Bend your knees straight down. Don't bend your back. 
right. you know, grab, grab whatever item you're going to, to, to be lifting up and get a firm grip on it. And of course, using your hands and on your hands and fingers. And then it says, um, you know, using your legs to lift yourself up. Don't use your back. Don't bend over and try to lift. Um, that's, that's where you're going to start getting those kind of strains. Once you get a strain in your back, it takes a while to, to, for it to, you know, heal. Um, you know, ice, ibuprofen, all of those things help. And there's usually not a lot they can do for back pain other than time. You know, like I said, anti-inflammatories, ice, rest. Um, with some of the heavy equipment that you guys can use, especially the mainline machines for, for the plumbers, I mean, same thing, let gravity do its job. So when it's coming out of the truck, let gravity do. Just, but don't be bending over, and, you know, out of your out of your truck, and and use your knees. Use your knees. Let gravity do its job. Um, that's the best way to do it. When you're going up, same thing. That now you're bending down and lifting straight up. But let the let the let the vehicle be part of the sliding it in and sliding it down um, every time because you know that just that surface alone will help. If you just try to lift the whole thing in and over muscle it, you're going to you're going to strain something on your back or you know we don't need those kind of injuries. Um, so if you change direction, oh and it says do not jerk the load. So obviously you're not going to you're not going to just try to jerk it. You're going to slow and easily lift your legs, bend, you know, straighten your legs out. Um, the other thing that it says is that's important is don't when you're if you must change direction when you're carrying your load, don't do this. Don't be twisting and turning your body. You have the load, you keep it as close to your body as you can, you're basically going to just rotate your feet, you know, left or right, whatever you got to do. If you're doing that, because also you can do knees, knee damage, and back damage very easily just by doing this kind of thing. Twisting and turning, your, you know, you're not in the center of the, the box or whatever, the, whatever you're lifting is further away from your body. You want to keep it real close to your body, as close as you can, and like I said, move your feet. Make your feet do the moving, you're going to walk away or walk towards wherever you're going to walk. Just don't be twisting your body and, you know, this type of exercise is not good for your back. Okay? So, that's something that I'm going to tell you as you're younger, it's important because when you get older, once you damage your back, it's just, it's a long way to recover. Okay? And trust me, you don't want to be there. Um, and obviously set down objects the same way you pick them up, using your knees. Not, don't bend over with your back. Use your knees and bend them to come down whatever, to whatever level you have to. It's on a table or whatever the case may be. Even if you're putting it down at another spot on the ground, make sure you use your knees, keep your back straight. Feet 6 to 12 inches apart, one foot in front. Just do the exact, the exact opposite of the way that you lifted it. Okay? All right, so... The other thing is do not lift an object from the floor to a level above your waist in one motion. So we're not doing deadlifts, I know we're not at the gym, you know, we're not trying to just lift this thing really fast and heavy over your, over your waist. If you're going above your waist, again, just do a slow motion, get it to where you need to, then the last second, you know, get it up where you need to go and put it down. Alright, any questions on lifting? Alright, so... Uh, it doesn't matter how heavy the thing is, guys. I'm going to tell you this for, also from personal experience. I hurt my back when I was in the military, so that was an injury that I had had before I started. You know, uh, once I started lifting afterwards, doesn't matter if it was in the gym. Doesn't matter if I was lifting a box. I have to be really careful on how I lift a box because that injury will kind of just come right back, um, and there's not much I can do about it other than be real careful on how I lift things. So I'm just telling you though, once you get that injury, it's really hard to, you know, to heal. You have to do a lot of core exercises and things like that. That's a, a really good thing to help strengthen your back is your front. <laughs> your core really does make a huge difference. So just for the, you guys who, who don't work on your core, it's something that I would suggest you do if you can. Um, Ladders and step ladders. <clears throat> Another, the most common injury on ladders and step ladders. What do you guys think that is? Slipping. And why would you slip on a ladder? You're not looking. Standing on the wrong, my feet. 
Okay. Or is it South okay. Balance, maybe? Okay, those are some good ones. What else? Boots. Raining. Wet. Right. What about what about a dirty ladder that has mud on it, or you know that you left on there didn't get cleaned off, or um, you know raining for sure? So here's some of the things that, um, that you know that we talk about for ladders that are really important. You know, obviously don't use if they have loose rungs, and that's usually the old style wooden ladders for those of you who ever have those. You know, they don't have those much anymore. But the old wooden ladders, you know, they, they used to get. Loose